chaos. We've got chaos, we've got underfunding, we've got shortage of workers, um, we've got um, um, people are forced to behave in ways that, that they never even knew that they would. They should be being looked after in the community by the people who the community pays to look after them. Simon, was it? A great friend of mine, Bill Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you come here? Why? Yeah. Why do I come here? Because um, it's very good to have a hot meal. Yeah. yeah. It's very good to have a hot meal. Yeah. Yeah. You had mental issues, psychiatric issues? Yeah. Yeah. And how well did they treat you? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Do they, do they take you in and then let you out or what? Or? I, I, I go on usually twice a year. Twice a year? Two weeks, something like that. And what happens? What happens? Uh, just volunteering, making sure I keep them with volunteering and that. Yeah. And do they visit you at your home? No. No? You're just left to, uh, on your own for the rest of the time? Yeah. And you're quite happy with that? Yeah. So Bill, how would you describe the plight of people who you look after here? Desperate. <laughs> desperate would be the word and then a step up from desperate, if you get what I mean. But difficult. And in terms of the way that society looks after these people? Well, they don't. Like if, if you, I'm just thinking, we've got a, a COVID outbreak now here and so we, we're on minimum services because we don't want to spread it all and get it spreading. Um, and I was just thinking today, it's cold and it's wet and um, people are sick. Um, what happens to those people? Where can they go? They'll, they'll get a, they might end up going to hospital and get, a, uh, get turf, turfed out again. Where do people who are cold, sick, homeless, mentally on the edge, where do they go? They'll be opening the restaurant in a minute, so we'll have a look at up the front there. We'll have a look out the front, because they'll be queued up. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> it's like a tomb. Of course, it's got to be the day you come, isn't it? Of the people here, would you estimate I have mental health issues that, that require support that aren't getting it? How many, what proportion? Nearly all of them. <laughs> Nearly all of them. You just, you, they're, they're the forgotten Australians, you know? Um, they're, uh, um, and like they're as Australian as you and me, you know? The hardest problem because most of these people know what process, we all know what processing is. And what we try here is humanise them and talk to people and find their stories. And these people don't need anything more than other people are getting. <laughs> I'll put it that way. They need love and care and community and support. That's what they need, what everybody needs. Everything that was predicted came to pass. Everything. People now are in jail who should have been, who would have been in hospital in those days. And we predicted that and we said that. And they said, oh no, no, we're going to have all these whiz bang community health centres and there'll be people on the streets working with people and all of this. And it was just a con. How would you describe, you know, our society's neglect of these people that you see every day? Unconscionable. Unconscionable. Um, they, could, <laughs> they could be your brother and sister, they could be your daughter, but because it's not your brother or your sister or your mum and dad, you just let it happen. What's purported to be welfare and what's purported to be money to help people goes to the people who administer it so that the people right at the bottom never really get it. What you can say is the worried well will take the majority of the resources. 
Um, and, um, um, and what worries me is people don't want to look at the essential causes of it all. We're dealing a lot with the worried well um, because um, society has created that, which means those at the bottom of the heap get even less resources.